this afternoon. Um, I'm going to provide a brief overview and then turn to General Van Herk to provide um, an operational perspective as well. In light of the People's Republic of China balloon um, that we took down last Saturday, we have been mo more closely scrutinizing our airspace at these altitudes, including enhancing our radar, which may at least partly explain the increase in objects that we've detected over the past week. We also know that a range of entities, including countries, companies, research organizations, operate objects at these altitudes for purposes that are not nefarious, including legitimate research. That said, because we have not yet been able to definitively assess what these recent objects are, we have acted out of an abundance of caution to protect our security and interests. The spy balloon from the PRC was of course different in that we knew precisely what it was. Um, these most recent objects do not pose a kinetic military threat, but their path in proximity to sensitive DOD sites and the altitude that they were flying could be a hazard to civilian aviation and, and thus raise concerns. Again, as we have said, we do not assess that the recent objects pose any direct threat to people on the ground, and we are laser focused on confirming their nature and purpose including through intensive efforts to collect debris in the remote locations where they have landed after being shot down. Um, we are in close coordination and cooperation with the government of Canada, as well as through Sir NORAD with the Canadian military. Thanks very much. Um, look forward to your questions and I'll hand it over to General Van Hart. Uh, thanks, uh, Secretary Dalton. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today and provide you an update. Every day, uh, North American Aerospace Defense Command and United States Northern Command monitor the approaches to North America and the United States of America across all domains. And uh, yesterday evening, approximately 1645 or 445 Eastern Time on 11 February, NORAD detected a radar contact in Canadian airspace uh, approximately 70 or so miles north of the United States border. We began tracking that radar contact, and it when became clear it was unknown, uh, following normal NORAD procedures, it was not talking to the Federal Aviation Administration, no squawk, and approaching our air defense identification zone. I scrambled F-15 fighters from Portland, Oregon, along with a KC-135 tanker support from Fairchild Air Force Base in Washington to go investigate to identify what the radar contact was. At 1800 Eastern or 6 p.m. Eastern, the radar track crossed into the United States sovereign airspace. At 7.04 Eastern time, the F-15s with their tanker support were on station to investigate. We continued to investigate. What's important to point out, this is near dark. Uh, within a half hour, 45 minutes of dark. We continue to investigate to identify, locate the object. We were unsuccessful. It's also important to point out in this part of the United States, uh, we did not have data link for queuing like we had had before. Data link allows the radars on the ground to share information to the fighters airborne, allowing them to queue their sensors and their visual acuity in an attempt to visually identify the trap. At sunset, we were unable to find the track. Also, our radar uh, operators lost the track on radar, and the FAA was never tracking the radar. Therefore, that's why we called it an anomaly, because we weren't able to identify it. Several hours later, overnight, we began seeing an intermittent radar contact east of the position in Montana as it approached Wisconsin. At that point, we developed a game plan once we started seeing another radar contact to go investigate. It's likely, but we have not confirmed that the track that we saw in Wisconsin was likely the same track in Montana. We elected to scramble with uh, the best position to intercept if, if we needed to engage with the lowest collateral damage. And that was in the eastern portion of Wisconsin just prior to Lake Michigan when the fighters became uh, on the, uh, the track of interest at that time. 
We monitored the track of interest as it passed over uh, Lake Michigan. Uh, we assessed that it was no threat, physical threat, military threat, legal infrastructure. That's my assessment. It continues to be today. However, at this point, we still have an unknown, and it forces a broader discussion about what is this object that's in our U.S. Uh, sovereign airspace. It's within our Federal Aviation Administration airspace, not providing any communications, not providing any notice that could potentially, excuse me, potentially help us deconflict, and therefore we wanted to investigate further. Uh, we did. Uh, it tracked across the upper peninsula of Michigan. Uh, we were cleared to engage the target in eastern uh, upper peninsula of Michigan uh, overland and ultimately down uh, the object at this point, uh, about 15 nautical miles east of the upper peninsula in Lake Huron. Uh, what we saw is an object that uh, began uh, drifting uh, potentially uh, most likely landed in Canadian waters in Lake Huron. And we have ongoing recovery operations with Coast Guard assets uh, moving towards uh, this area. I would like to highlight this entire time. Uh, I remain in contact with my Canadian boss, Wayne Air, General Wayne Air. The Canadians were very supportive. The Canadians launched two F-18s plus their tanker as well uh, to support this operation. The fighters were from Madison, Wisconsin, Air National Guard unit. We utilized a tanker from Pittsburgh, Air National Guard, and we had an AWACS on station from Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma. Uh, that's all I have for my operational update, and I look forward to your questions. Secretary Dalton, General Van Herk, thank you both. Uh, for our first question, we'll go to Associated Press, Tara Kopp. Hi, thank you very much, both of you, for doing this at this late hour. Um, for Secretary Dalton and for General Van Herc, you know, we've had four shoot downs in the last eight days. Can you talk about the sense of concern you have and should Americans be worried? This is a very rare thing to have this many shoot downs or any shoot downs over uh, U.S. airspace. And then secondly, General Van Herc, can you give us any indication of what your pilots are seeing and reporting? Thanks. Hey, before we jump into the question, just a reminder, everyone, please mute your phones. Thank you. Sounds like we have an open mic out there. My apologies. Over to you, ma'am. Great. Um, Tara, thanks so much for, for the question and for dialing in also at, at a late hour. Um, the safety and security of the American people are job number one for, for us at the Department of Defense and, and certainly for NORAD and, and General Van Herc's team. Um, we, following the um, track of the PRC balloon last week, as I mentioned at the top, um, we have been more closely scrutinizing our airspace at these altitudes, enhancing our radar, um, which may at least partly explain the increase in the objects detected. Um, but we also know that there are a range of entities out there, um, whether they're private companies, research organizations, um, that operate objects at these altitudes for purposes that are not nefarious, including legitimate research. Um, but because we have not been able to definitively assess what these recent objects are, um, the, the president wanted to act out of an abundance of caution to protect our security and, and our interests. Um, so we will remain vigilant. Um, we have made these enhancements to, to our radars, um, and the operations this past week have been successful. In, in bringing down these, these potential threats. And um, we are hard at work now recovering the debris to better understand um, the, certainly the capabilities of the surveillance balloon from the PRC, but also the nature of these unidentified objects um, to better understand were they surveillance objects, um, what was their purpose, what are their capabilities, and we look forward to sharing more as we learn more in, in the coming days. Thanks, Melissa. Let me just add on. So your question is about uh, citizens being concerned. I assess all of these to be non-kinetic threats to the homeland. And uh, I don't uh, see that changing even when we recover uh, debris. Every day, NORAD, United States Northern Command are ready uh, to defend, uh, sir, as required. So I think this is a story where we were successful in detecting uh, and if uh, if needed to respond. 
What I would tell you is what we're seeing is very, very small objects uh, that produce a very, very low radar cross section. I'm not going to go into detail about shapes or anything like that, really, because it's really, really difficult for pilots at the altitudes we're operating. It's a very, very slow object in the space, if you will, going at the speed of the wind, essentially. And our pilots are going several hundred miles per hour to give us what I would consider a factual, a scientific based description of what we see. And therefore, I, I'm hesitant to tell you that. Uh, with that being said, I would like to talk about the radar and the challenges that we face. Some Something going this slow. So as uh, Assistant Secretary Dalton talked about, uh, radars essentially um, filter out information based on speed. So you can set various uh, gates, we call them velocity gates, uh, that allow us to filter out low speed clutter. So if you had radars on all the time that we're looking at anything from zero speed uh, up to say 100, you would see a lot more information. We have adjusted some of those uh, gates to give us better fidelity on uh, seeing slower objects. You can also filter out by altitude. And so with some adjustments, we've been able to uh, get a better uh, categorization of radar tracks now. And that's why I think you're seeing we, these overall. Plus there's a heightened uh, alert to look for this information. I hope that adds additional clarification. Just one quick follow-up, um, you know, four shoot downs in eight days. When was the last time that U.S. fighters were scrambled and shot something down over U.S. airspace? I, I can't remember anything. And it, it just seems like there's a, a large and quick escalation to shooting down objects. I'll have to get with our historians. I believe this is the first time within United States of America airspace that NORAD or United States Northern Command has taken kinetic action against an airborne object. Thank you, Tar. Thank you, sir, ma'am. Let's go to Jen Griffin, Fox News. Hey, thanks, Pat. Um, this is Liz. I'll be asking for Jen today. Um, are these balloons that have been shot down since Friday, or are they weather balloons? You want me to take Thanks that very one? much for the, the question. Yep, go ahead, go ahead, Glenn. Yeah, so I'm not going to categorize them as balloons. We're calling them objects for a reason. Uh, certainly the event off the South Carolina coast uh, for the Chinese spy balloon, that was clearly a balloon. These are objects. Uh, I am uh, not able to categorize how they stay aloft. It could be a gaseous uh, type of uh, uh, balloon inside a structure, or it could be some type of a propulsion system. But clearly, they're, uh, they're able to stay aloft. I would be hesitant to and urge you not to uh, attribute it to any specific country. We don't know. That's why it's so critical to get our hands on these so that we can further assess and analyze what they are. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Nancy Youssef, Wall Street Journal. Thank you. Um to both of you, you're saying that their preliminary assessment is that they don't pose a kinetic threat, but that they are objects and not balloons, and that you need to sort of adjust your radar. And I guess I'm trying to get an understanding, what is the the expectation going forward, or at least in the next few days? Are you Is it your plan to continue to, to shoot these down or to make adjustments such that um, you can make assessments better, that they don't always have to happen when you're shooting something down? I, I'm trying to get a sense of the adjustment, General Fanrick, that you referred to and what that will look like, practically speaking, in the days ahead. Thank you. And Nancy, thanks for the question. So the expectation going forward is we'll continue to do in, doing our mission exactly like we've been doing now, approaching 65 years for NORAD. If there's an unknown object that enters either Canadian or U.S. airspace, we will go out, we will attempt to identify it. If it's a threat, kinetic threat, military threat, I am delegated the authority if it commits a hostile act or hostile intent. And let me describe a hostile act. Hostile act would be shooting a missile, dropping a bomb, uh, taking the aggressive action. A hostile intent would be maneuvering to an offensive position against our forces or something like that. In that situation, I'm cleared directly to engage without further permission. In this case, there is no hostile act or hostile intent but it is an unknown object. And therefore we have to have a further discussion 
uh, across the government, both the government of Canada in some cases and the government of the United States to assess, is it a risk to national security by passing over key covered facilities such as our missile fields and other structure? Is it a risk to flight safety? Is it a risk to uh, personnel on the ground? And then if you're going to take action, you have to make an assessment of what is the risk of collateral damage to uh, potentially boats and mariners out of the water, our infrastructure and people on the ground. That's essentially the process you go to uh, and have to go through. And we've done that on each one of these. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's go to David Martin, CBS. You say that uh, <clears throat> this is the uh, the first time we've ever had uh, shoot downs, at least as to the best of your memory. But has any of this happened before the Chinese balloon was discovered? Have there been these unidentified objects which have been uh, tracked for a while and then left U.S. airspace, but but have entered and for one reason or another were not, uh, what should I say, prosecuted like you've, you've been doing these uh, the ones since the, uh, the the Chinese balloon. Yeah, David, so great, great question. Thanks for that. So we have scrambled in the past against radar uh, tracks that we've been unable to correlate with fighters. That has happened over years. Uh, and sometimes it's attributed to potentially being birds. Sometimes uh, it's been attributed to weather. Uh, sometimes we don't know what to attribute it to. What I would say is you go back and look over time, we've been able to figure out the best way to track various sources, including uh, the high altitude balloons that we've talked about recently back to 2019 and prior, and couple that with our uh, adjustments of our radar. It gives us a better ability to detect and have better domain awareness, as you've heard me talk about. I don't know if uh, Secretary Dalton wants to add anything to that. Thank you very much, General Van Herc. I would just add to that that as, as we learn more about these objects and certainly the PRC balloon, um, we're going to enhance our understanding of the characteristics um, of them um, that will perhaps uh, enable us to, to look back um, at prior instances um, that were potentially overlooked or weren't looked closely enough um, at, uh, you know, to see if, if there's a comparison to be made there and certainly will help us going forward to better identify and, and track um, these types of objects in the land. Have you reached the, uh, the object that went down off uh, uh, northern Alaska? David, uh, we're, we're actively searching for that uh, object right now. I've got a Navy uh, P-8, which is surveilling the area with helicopters as well. Uh, once we uh, locate that object, we'll put an Arctic security package in there and begin the analysis and recovery, but we don't have it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Courtney QB, NBC. Hi, thanks. How are you so confident that the initial balloon was Chinese? Were there some markings on it? I'm trying to figure out why, because from, from very early on, it seemed that there was a, a real confidence versus these last three that we can't get any sense of who owns them or what they were doing. Thanks, some sort of we know emergency from... um, crash oh. briefing um, that's supposed to take place now. Um, Hey, we have a hot mic out there. Go ahead, Secretary. Thanks, Dalton. Courtney. Thank yeah, thank you. Um, so, Courtney, for the, the PRC balloon, um, we had a basis in intelligence uh, to know definitively um, that its point of origin was uh, the People's Republic of China. So uh, what I'm what I'm struggling with now is these these last three that we still are calling objects. We don't know what they are. You knew that the Chinese one was was surveilling and potentially you knew who it belonged to and and yet there was no effort to there there was a decision not to take it down until it was over the ocean i understand that there was concerns about the, everything on the ground there but uh, can someone explain why the decision is made to take these last three unknown objects we don't know who they belong to we don't know what they're doing that you know it, but i still don't quite understand why the decision was made to it, literally in, in succession it seems like they're being being taken down faster and faster and faster i mean is there is there some other concern or threat that you're tracking 
that that is giving a heightened sense of need to take these down? Courtney, um, the thank you. The the process that General Van Hart described earlier in terms of the criteria that we work through um, to determine whether you know these objects or in the case of the PRC balloon, the balloon was was a threat. Um, we look to see if it's going to pose a kinetic military threat. In both cases, um, that that was not the case. Um, we look to see is it surveilling. Uh, potentially DOD sensitive sites. Um, we knew um, that was the case in both instances, and it was even more concerning in the case of the PRC balloon because we knew that it was a PRC balloon. Um, we also consider, is it a threat to civilian aviation? In the case of the PRC balloon, it was flying at an altitude that it did not pose a threat to civilian aviation. Um, and so that was part of uh, the criteria for bringing it down over, over the water when we could safely do so, in addition to its enormous size. It was 200 feet tall. Payload was the size of, of three school buses. Um, and, you know, for these, these unidentified objects um, being much smaller, but unfortunately flying at an altitude um, that, that did pose a risk, risk uh, potentially to safe civilian aviation, that was part of the criteria that went into deciding to um, take the objects down over the last three days um, sooner in, in the, the tracking cycle. Um, so, you know, that's the process that we have rigorously worked through over the last week. General Van Herk, anything you want to add? No, uh, Melissa, I think you're, you're right on. I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Let's go to Brent Dahlberg, Michigan Radio. Hi, thanks. Uh, a missile seems like a particularly destructive weapon uh, to be using if there's a desire to investigate and figure out what these are afterwards. Can you explain why, ex explain the weapon's choice? Absolutely. Unless if you don't mind, I'll take this one. So um, first of all, uh, Maintaining a radar track on an object this small uh, is very hard. So taking a uh, radar shot, such as an AIM-120, uh, would be a lower probability of success. We assess taking a gunshot uh, yesterday in that event, as well as uh, today. And the pilots in each situation felt that that was really unachievable because of the size, especially yesterday in the altitude uh, and uh, also because of uh, uh, the challenge to acquire it visually because it's so small. It's also potentially a safety of flight issue because you have to get so close to the uh, object before you see it that you potentially could fly into the debris or the actual object. Therefore, in each situation, the AIM-9X, a heat-seeking missile or infrared missile that sees contrast, has been the uh, uh, the weapons of choice against the uh, the objects which we've been seeing. In each case, we have taken extreme caution to ensure that we limit potential collateral damage. So today, we worked closely with the FAA to clear out the airspace. Uh, I I gave direction specifically to the pilots to use their visual acuity to check for mariners on the ground, uh, airplanes in the air, to clear with their radars as well. And when they were comfortable that we could minimize collateral damage, they selected the best weapon today. That was the AIM-9X, and they took the shot. Thank you. Let's go to Helene Cooper, New York Times. Hi. Thanks, Pat, and thanks for doing this. This is for General Van Herc. Uh, because you still haven't been able to tell us what these things are that we are shooting out of the sky, uh, that raises the question, um, have you ruled out aliens or extraterrestrials? And if so, why? Because that is what everyone is asking us right now. Yeah, thanks for the question, Helene. I'll let the intel community and the uh, counterintelligence community figure that out. I haven't ruled out anything uh, at this point. We continue to assess uh, every threat or potential threat unknown that approaches North America uh, with an attempt to identify it. Thanks. Let's go to uh, Warren Lieberman, CNN. 
Uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, are you currently tracking other unidentified objects in U.S. airspace? And you've now shot down three objects in three days. Are we to believe these are the first three unidentified objects in U.S. airspace, or do you believe there are dozens or potentially hundreds of other such objects that have flown through U.S. airspace? And have any of these recent objects interfered with pilot sensors? Thank you. Yeah, for your last question, I'm not going to talk about the uh, sensors and what, what we've seen. Uh, if you don't mind, that, that needs to come out through the intel communities and what we've seen. I'm not currently tracking any other objects at this point. That doesn't mean there couldn't be more at some point in the future, but right now we're not seeing anything. As far as, uh, uh, you know, why previously, well, I don't know if there was more. We do know after the fact that there was high altitude balloons because we went back and we were able to reconstruct that. As far as these specific objects at this time, I'm unaware to say. It's certainly possible, uh, but uh, I, I don't have the fidelity to give you the, the answer. We will go look at the data to see if we can figure anything out uh, about the potential for not seeing these previously. Thank you. Let's go to Phil Stewart, Phil Stewart Reuters. Hey there, I just want to double check what exactly, I know you talked about the, the fact that you had, you know, we weren't track looking for slower speed um, aircraft and uh, and that the, these objects had a lower radar cross section, but could you just kind of explain to us what makes uh, these objects in particular more difficult to track or why you weren't tracking them before? And then, and I guess the other question I think everybody's kind of wondering is, you know, now that you've uh, tweaked everything, uh, should the American public be expecting, you know, lots more shoot downs? Thanks. Thanks, Phil. What, what makes them really hard to detect and track is, is their size uh, and uh, potentially shape. But we'll get our hands on them at some point. I can't confirm that right now, but that could uh, certainly play a, a rule or a, uh, a factor in this. As far as going forward, I'll go back to my mission is to defend our homeland in both my NORAD and NORTHCOM hat. Anything that approaches North America, if it's unknown, uh, I'm going to go identify it and assess, is it a threat? Uh, if it is a threat, I'll shoot it down. If it's not a threat, the kinetic military threat that we talked about earlier, uh, it's not committing a hostile act or hostile intent, then we'll have a broader discussion. Your second part of that is really about what are we going to do in the future is really a policy decision. I'll ask Secretary Dalton if she wants to add anything. I'd only add again that the safety and security of the American people is, is job number one for us. Um, and for any of these operations, um, we fine tune them to ensure that um, there's going to be little to no collateral damage. Um, none of the operations over the last week have resulted in collateral damage. But, but uh, Secretary Dalton, could you just explain then? Is it, is it, could, could do we expect that there's been a policy decision? That will lead us to near daily shoot downs as we, as we detect these things more and more. Phil, so thank you. We, we are taking this very much on a case by case basis. Um, each operation has has been different, um, and we will certainly keep you updated as we continue to learn more about these objects and the PRC balloon and what that means for us going forward. Thank you. Let's go to Ben Brash, Washington Post. Thank you very much, uh, both for taking the time. Um, more directly, um, in, in reference to the last question, is it our policy or a preference of the United States government still to not shoot down anything over U.S. territory? Um, when is it that you make that call? I know you talked about assessing if anything was a kinetic threat, but is it policy or preference? Thank you very much. The, the policy is to, to defend the, the United States and its sovereign territory and airspace. We'll stop. Thank you. We have time for just a, a few more. Let's go to Dimitri Sivaspalo, Financial okay. Times. Uh, thanks very much, Pat. Um, two questions. At this point, are you able to assess that the, the three objects over Alaska, Yukon, and Lake Huron, are they similar objects as far as you can tell? And then secondly, the Biden administration has said that it um, realized this was a problem last year. It briefed Congress in August. So I'm curious, why didn't you recalibrate the gateways on the radar systems earlier um, if you knew the Chinese balloons were, were an issue at that point? Yeah, let me 
me talk about the, the so the, the way I would characterize uh, similar, uh, they're similar in size, uh, similar in speeds that go with the wind on these objects that we've seen. As far as specific shapes, we've got to get our hands on those to see uh, fidelity of detail of shape, uh, how they get uh, airborne, do they have propulsion, all of those things are still to be determined. Um, your, your second part of that, uh, of that question, remind me what that was. So you said that recently, the reason you may be detecting more things is you recalibrated or changed the thresholds for gateways on the radar systems. I wonder, given that you briefed, not you, but the administration briefed Congress on the Chinese balloon program last August, why were gateways not changed back then? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, the timing of the intel uh, and adjustments, what I would say is we didn't necessarily need see a need to change them then. The Chinese high altitude balloon alerted us to the uh, the speed, the slowness, uh, and being able to detect, uh, we decided to do that at that time. I hope that makes sense to you. But, but I would just add. Given that there were questions about the program, you know, as early as August last year, and those balloons were flying at those kind of speeds then, was there not a discussion about changing the gateways back then? I can uh, perhaps help here as well. Um, so the, the briefings to um, Congress last year were done, I believe, through intelligence channels. Um, and again, you know, that was intelligence that was better understood uh, retrospectively um, based on elements of the equation that, that were discovered um, after the fact. Um, and then the high altitude balloon from the PRC that um, was shot down last weekend was categorically different um, than the prior high altitude balloons because it um, transited the entire continental United States, uh, starting with Alaska, across Canada, and, and across CONUS. Um, and so it was quite different um, than, than the prior instances. And, and on that basis, um, we determined that we needed to enhance our, our radar. Thank you. Okay, we've got time for just uh, two more questions here. We'll go to Peter Martin Bloomberg. Hey, thanks very much for doing this. Um, I wanted to ask, has Secretary Austin talked yet with Wei Feng He from the PRC about the first balloon? And then in addition, has DOD communicated with the Chinese military at any level about any of these subsequent objects? Thank you. Thank you. Um, there, there have been uh, contacts made with uh, the PRC on the high altitude balloon. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, final question will go to uh, Brian Everstein, Aviation Week. Hi, right, thank you so much for doing this. Back to the discussion on the AIM-9X. Can you talk about what about these objects gave off enough heat signature for the IR seeker without any sort of propulsion system? And secondly, uh, the F-16 presumably has a targeting pod. I assume you had eyes on from other aircraft. Will the Pentagon be releasing any of these images? Yeah, I'll let uh, policy decide on, on the images. That's not mine. But the, the AIM-9X, uh, first, I wouldn't make an assumption there wasn't a propulsion system or there was. What I would say is what you have is uh, a contrast between uh, the, the uh you know, the, the environment and the objects themselves, which gives off an uh, IR contrast, which allows the missile to track. And that's been uh, very, very effective for the AIM-9X. Uh, Melissa, over to you on the uh, release and releasing of uh, photos. Thank you. Um, we, we absolutely want to be transparent about our military operations and what we are learning about these objects and the PRC high altitude balloon and hope to share more in the coming days. My, my apologies. I had one last question here this, uh, to Nick Slayton, task and purpose, and that will be our final question. Thank you. Um, I wanted to see when we talk about investigating or uh, investigating the debris of this, who, who's taking the lead on that? Is that the all domain uh, anomaly resolution office? And then also uh, we've seen free shoot downs in free days is if this was to continue, you know, if this pace of operations was to continue, 
would that is that proving to be a would that be a strain on units or are all units able to handle these kind of rapid scramblings in that regard? Thank you. Melissa, you want that or you want me to take it? You go right ahead. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, all right. So as far as the recovery lead, uh, technically, uh, the FBI uh, has the lead under counterintelligence authorities. They are embedded with DOD because we have the resources to enable them to conduct the operations. Uh, in Canada, uh, the Canadians have the lead. Uh, their Royal Canadian uh, Mounted Police are embedded with their Canadian Special Operations Forces, and we have the FBI forces as well uh, liaison with them to make sure that we're sharing as much info as possible. Thank you. Secretary, Secretary Dalton, General Van Herc, thank you both very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time we have for this evening. Thank you again for joining us. We will be posting a transcript to defense.gov uh, once it's available later tonight. Thank you very much. Out here. Have a great night. Thank you. Go Eagles.